At Arizona State University, we offer a wide variety of degree programs online to match all kinds of interests and career aspirations. Programs that are taught by the same notable faculty who teach on campus and designed using innovative technology to improve learning outcomes and equip you for post-graduation success. That's why 87% of ASU online graduates indicated they were promoted at work or received an increase in salary after earning their degree. Find your program at asuonline.asu.edu. Welcome to True Crime Stories with Crime Crimatorium. Rachel and Ricky Norton both experienced a rough start in life. Rachel spent much of her childhood in and out of foster and group homes, and Ricky committed some petty crimes as a teenager. They each lived in other states before moving to Utah when they were 16. Neither of them graduated from high school and met at a mall in downtown Salt Lake City. On July 8, 2006, Three years after meeting, they got married. Rachel was pregnant with her third daughter. Destiny Norton was born on November 3, 2000, and was the couple's first child. The family was living in a rented duplex in the Salt Lake area. On the night of Sunday, July 16, 2006, just eight days after Ricky and Rachel got married, five-year-old Destiny went outside to play in the yard. She had just taken a bath and was wearing her mother's black and gray t-shirt and no shoes or socks. She hadn't been playing long when 20-year-old Craig Gregerson, a neighbor of the Nortons, was alerted by his dog barking, prompting him to look out the window. When he did, he saw Destiny playing outside in the adjacent yard. Gregerson went into his backyard and opened the gate and motioned for Destiny to follow him into his apartment. Craig Gregerson was born in Orem, Utah, and was the seventh of eight kids. He mostly kept to himself and was described as lazy by one of his brothers. He also added that his brother didn't graduate from high school. At the time of Destiny's disappearance, Gregerson was married, although he and his wife were separated and he had a young daughter who was staying with their mother. Once Destiny was inside Gregerson's home, she immediately screamed that she wanted to go home. Afraid that she would be heard, he put his hand over her mouth and squeezed. When Destiny's body went limp, he carried her into his basement, where he would come back later and engage in sexual activity with her deceased body. Destiny's parents called 911 at 8.41 p.m. after not being able to see her anywhere in the vicinity. An Amber Alert was issued and two calls came in, claiming to have spotted Destiny. After these sightings were checked out and cleared, the search continued. Fifty officers would eventually start combing the area for Destiny, and flyers with her picture and description would be handed out. Canines were also brought in, but they never picked up on Destiny's scent. The search continued well into the night and the next day with no sign of Destiny. On July 18th, almost two days after she had gone missing, 200 volunteers were now looking for her. A website was created and a reward for $15,000 was posted. Another day passed, and Destiny was still missing, and there were no new leads. More and more volunteers showed up, and the area of search grew. The reward was also raised to $30,000. Although Gregerson had no prior criminal record, the police began to focus on him after speaking with him. He gave the detectives permission to search his apartment and they were unable to find Destiny. 
Gregerson also agreed to take a polygraph test, and officers obtained a warrant to search his apartment more thoroughly. Their search was executed on July 24th, and officers located Destiny's body in the cramped and cluttered basement of the apartment. It was evident that Gregerson had attempted to mask any odors with cleaning products. Officers seized 27 items from the apartment, including various documents and clothing, a camera, and VHS tapes, among other things. Gregerson met with an FBI agent that same day and confessed to killing Destiny. He was charged with aggravated murder and child kidnapping. When the details of her death reached family and friends of Destiny, they were horrified. They were also outraged that he helped in the search for her and even showed up to the vigils that were held. Once Destiny's body was found and the autopsy was performed, the medical examiner released it to her family and funeral services were held. By this time, Rachel was eight and a half months pregnant, so the couple stayed in seclusion. Prosecutors were considering the death penalty, but Gregerson pled guilty to the charges, which spared him that sentence. He was sentenced to life without parole. During the sentencing hearing, he gave no explanation for what he did. However, he did give Rachel and Ricky a handwritten letter that read, Dear Norton family, you have every right to hate me every right to want me dead, and every right to never forgive me. I take full responsibility for your daughter's death, but her death was not the worst part. What I did after she was dead was inexcusably sick and disgusting. I hate myself for what I did. I am in terrible pain every day because your daughter is dead by my actions. She should still be with you. All I can say is I'm sorry. The words are small, but they are so sincere. Sincerely, Craig Gregerson. Destiny's grandmother made a statement to the court where she referred to Gregerson as a monster. I now know what hate is and mine is unmatched, she said. Prosecutor Robert Stott said Gregerson will live in isolation in a high-security cell except for shower time. He also added, the inmate will have to be protected from others who could seek retribution for the killing of a defenseless girl. After detectives went through the paperwork, they seized from Gregerson's apartment it appeared that the kidnapping of Destiny was something he had planned. A few months before the abduction of Destiny, Gregerson used a dating site where his handle was Packerman365. In describing himself, he said, he was the second to the youngest child of eight, which was true. He also said his parents were dead, which was not true. He further added that he spent his free time studying and increasing his knowledge on all levels. He called himself shy at first, but that he quickly opens up. He said he liked the outdoors and football was his favorite sport. Going on further, he said, I may seem nerdy, but I really am not. Things just come easy for me. I love to have a good time and I rarely bore people. So hit me up and let's start chatting. Gregerson's wife divorced him and is now raising his young daughter. She was glad to get away from him because she claims to have been a battered wife. Ricky and Rachel had a baby daughter they named Faith five weeks after Destiny's murder. The couple received several donations from the community and different businesses. They even received a car from a local dealership. In 2009, Ricky was arrested for drug dealing and weapons violations. 
He spent some time in jail for these offenses. The couple had another daughter in 2008. They never received counseling after the death of Destiny, and in 2009, the couple divorced. By that time, they had lost their home and what was left of the donations they had received, and Rachel became homeless for a time. She was eventually able to find a home for her and her girls. About the aftermath of the crime, she said, It makes it difficult to proceed with a normal life when everybody thinks you're a sideshow. She also added, I just haven't figured out what I've done to make the universe so mad at me. Thank you for listening and watching today. I really appreciate all the kind words and the support I get. Until next time, take care.